Hi, we're not on the range today, we're in the field, and today will be part two of our two-part series on the 20-gauge shotgun. In part one, we talked about home defense, and today we'll talk about the 20-gauge as a hunting firearm. I take it as axiomatic that a 12-gauge is powerful enough for hunting. And in part one, we showed that 20-gauge is not as powerful as 12-gauge. So the question is, is it powerful enough to be a hunting firearm? Well, I've got several 20-gauge shotguns and a variety of 20-gauge ammunition. Let's shoot some targets and see what we can learn. Now, in discussing hunting with a shotgun, the first thing I want to talk about is maximum effective range. That can be affected by many things. The two big ones are your ammunition choices and the choke of your shotgun barrel. I have a presentation entitled Introduction to Shotguns where I'll speak more in depth about choke, but the short version is in a lot of shotgun barrels, just in the last little bit of barrel, they're tapered down or choked down, giving you a tighter shot column as it comes out of the muzzle, therefore a tighter pattern on the target. Now this Remington Model 11 has a cylinder bore barrel that has no choke whatsoever. And I've got it loaded with 20 gauge, 2 and 3 quarter inch, 1 ounce of number 6 lead bird shot. And I'll shoot this shoot and see from 15 yards, we'll put up a new one, shoot it from 30, put up a new one, shoot it from 45, and we'll see how the pattern varies as we get farther from the target. Now what we see at 15 yards is that my gun pattern's a little high, but that's a good pattern. Trying to shoot a grouse, a quail, a rabbit, you're going to be fine. At 30 yards, through pattern entropy, that pattern has become so big that it doesn't look all that effective. And at 45 yards, not effective at all. Even though you might be aiming on target, an animal could easily escape the pattern, which is a fancy way of saying you missed. So let's try a shotgun with a full choke barrel and see how our patterns will change at 15, 30, and 45 yards. Now this Winchester single shot 20 gauge has a full choke barrel. So let's see what kind of patterns we get at 15, 30, and 45 yards with this. So with our full choke gun at 15 yards, we see a really good pattern. At 30 yards, we still see a really good pattern. Now at 45 yards, this is a whole lot better than the cylinder bore gun was, but still that pattern's getting pretty thin. Your maximum effective range with this particular ammunition in that Winchester single shot shotgun is probably going to be around 40 yards to keep enough pellets on the animal you're hunting to get the desired effect. But the question is, at 40 yards, does each pellet have enough power to give you enough penetration to get the desired effect on the animal you're hunting? Let's see if we can put that to the test. So what we've got here is a chicken placed on a high-tech chicken stand. Now, of course, our chicken has lost its feathers, so we'll put some leather jacket skin over it to compensate for the feather loss, and I'll shoot it from 40 yards with our Winchester single shot, which is still loaded with 2 and 3 quarter inch, 1 ounce of number 6 lead bird shot. Well, I've done the necropsy on our chicken, and remember a chicken's going to have a lot thicker, heavier breast than most game birds will. Saw a lot of penetration. There's actually several pellets stuck just under the skin on the back of the chicken. So at 40 yards, our pellets still have plenty of power to give you sufficient penetration for most animals you'd hunt. But what about larger animals like deer? Well, let's see what we can do. Now I've got my Mossberg Maverick 20 gauge shotgun and it has a modified choke which is between full choke and cylinder bore and I've got it loaded with Winchester Super X 20 gauge 2 and 3 quarter inch 20 pellets of number 3 buckshot. Number 3 buckshot is 25 caliber spheres which is actually not legal to hunt deer with in the state where I live but I'm going to use it because it is by far the most common size of buckshot for a 20 gauge. I'm going to go back 35 yards and I'll shoot our deer target here twice and we'll see how many hits we get. I fired two shots, so that's a total of 40 pellets and this deer silhouette has 13 hits on it. That's a mean of 6.5 per shot and that might sound pretty good, 
But some of these shots are really peripheral hits. There's several hits in the abdomen, which might prove fatal later, but that would not incapacitate our deer very soon. There's a hit in the heart and a hit in the lung, which are good hits. And of course, there's one hit in the eyeball, which would prove incapacitating immediately. But all in all, I'd say I'm not really happy with these results. I think 35 yards is a little too far. I'm going to say the maximum effective range for this gun with this ammunition is 30 yards. Which brings up the question, at 30 yards, is this relatively small buckshot, a 25 caliber sphere, going to retain enough energy to have the desired effect on the deer? Let's see if we can test that. Now here's our deer meat target. It's got pork ribs on both sides and two bags of oranges to simulate both lungs. You typically shoot a deer from the side. So we'll set it like so, wrap it in a thicker, heavier leather coat than what we typically use to simulate the thick hide of a deer. We'll put the high-tech fleece bullet stop behind it, shoot from 30 yards with our number three buckshot and see what kind of results we get. how'd we do? Frankly, not very well. Our pellets went through our initial ribs, penetrated through our first bag of oranges pretty well, but quite a few of the pellets were stuck between the two bags of oranges. They didn't have enough energy to penetrate our second lung. I would consider that inadequate for deer hunting. I do know people that have killed deer with number four buckshot, which is even smaller, but that was from a 12 gauge shotgun, not a 20 gauge. So I'm gonna have to say this buckshot based on this is not what I would consider adequate for deer hunting. But right now a lot of people are thinking, okay, what about a slug? All right, I'll reload the Mossberg Maverick shotgun with slugs and we'll shoot from 50 yards and see what kind of results we get with that. Well, we got our meat target torn apart, but first let me show you what the slug looks like. There's what's left of our slug, and it was caught under the hide on the backside of the deer. Now, as far as what the slug did, on our ribs we see a big hole, lots of damage to our first lung, lots of damage to our second lung. So the 20 gauge buckshot was not that impressive, but was the slug adequate for deer? You be the judge. So what's the takeaway from all of this? Well, at the beginning I said a 20 gauge is not as powerful as a 12 gauge, but is it adequate for hunting? I talked about some different distances for maximum effective range, and remember those are not hard, fast rules. That's just the results I got with the guns I have and the ammunition I was using. The bird shot I was using was one ounce of shot. This three inch magnum ammunition has one and a quarter ounce of shot, and that can make a lot of difference. Now with the buckshot, I was really disappointed with today's results. We saw in part one that at five yards on our typical meat target, that number three buckshot was perfectly adequate. But today at 30 yards with our deer simulation meat target, that wasn't so good. However, when we switched to the slug, I'd say the results were more than sufficient. Now as far as is a 20 gauge really effective as a hunting gun, Every year the crew and I go on our annual jackrabbit hunt and I can tell you that it is very typical that while everyone else is using a 12 gauge, I'll be using some form of 20 gauge and I usually still get the most rabbits. A 20 gauge for me is perfectly adequate for hunting. Is it for you? You be the judge. So as always, don't try this at home, I'm what you call a professional and thanks for watching 20 gauge shotgun video part two.